Albertans head to the polls on Monday to vote for their next premier. Political analysts say it's been a close race between the United Conservative Party and current Premier Danielle Smith and NDP leader and former Premier Rachel Notley. Political commentator Graham Thompson joins us with what we might expect on Election Day. Welcome to Global News, Graham. Well, thanks for having me. Talk to us about this year's election campaign. It's been a unique one for many reasons, uh, but wildfires have somewhat been overshadowing election coverage. Has that had any impact on the race? Interesting. We thought it might. Uh, going back to the beginning of the campaign, the wildfires were, were so bad. There was talk of um, some of the elections in ridings affected by the wildfires being cancelled. Maybe half a dozen ridings could have seen their elections cancelled because people were forced from their homes. That hasn't happened, and that's not going to happen because, of course, even though it's, it's a, a personal tragedy for so many Albertans, just looking at the crass politics, the election will be going ahead in all ridings on Monday. A second thing we're looking at is leadership. How would uh, Danielle Smith present herself as a, uh, a leader during a crisis? And it seems to have gone well for her at the very beginning. She was doing a lot of news conferences, updates on the forest fires, the wildfires. And then she tried to transition back into the campaign. Um, like some surveys showed that people thought that she did fine. Also, people thought that Notley did fine because you know she was the official opposition leader, but she was premier in 2016 during the Fort McMurray fire. And so the two, so Notley and Smith actually met to discuss the forest fires and how to handle them. So Albertans like that. They like seeing both of them actually working together to uh, deal with the forest fire crisis. And so it seems that uh, they both did well in the eyes of Albertans. So that issue became sort of a non-issue during the campaign. Again, this has been a very tight race, but a recent ledger poll suggests that the UCP might have a slight lead. Do we anticipate they'll take the win, or is this still anyone's race? Well, right now we're seeing I think, four or five uh, polls in the last few days, all sort of showing a tilt towards the UCP, uh, some more than others. But it's still up for grabs in the sense it's getting out the vote right now. So, yes. So even though the inertia is still behind the UCP, uh, it's the incumbent government. Uh, Smith has presented herself as a much more moderate and reasonable uh, leader than she did during the UCP leadership race last year. But she had a very aggressive uh, fight at all costs um, uh, campaign, very divisive. Now she's presenting herself as a much more reasonable and inclusive leader. So that's really helped her. And the UCP is heading into the final days of the campaign. We think that they're slightly ahead. The question is by how much. But things are still up in the air. A lot of ridings up for grabs, a lot of toss-up ridings, especially in Calgary. That's the battleground we expect to see who wins and who loses on, on Monday. But right now, We've had the campaigning and the promises and the endorsements the last few days. It all comes down to getting out the vote. And this is still a very close election. I've been covering elections since my 11th election in Alberta, and I've never seen anything this close. Wow. Okay, let's take a look at the big picture here, Graham. What would an NDP government versus a UCP government mean for the rest of Canada? Describe the influence the two would have on national affairs. Yeah, it's a really important question. It doesn't get asked, I think, often enough. Uh, Notley is sort of saying that she would be um, stand up for Alberta, um, but still work with the federal government and other provinces, much like Peter Lougheed did in the 1970s. You know, get really tough when Ottawa when necessary, but still be inclusive um, Canadian. Uh, and I think it's a case where she is trying to present that as a more moderate, less drama-filled premier, whereas, of course, you've got uh, Danielle Smith, who campaigned last year and, and talked about, uh, of course, the Sovereignty Act. Uh, she passed that in places. She's not, she's not campaigning on the Sovereignty Act because it's not really that popular in Alberta. Sorry, the stand up to Ottawa, never ending wars with Ottawa. So if Smith wins, there's other issues. For example, Smith is, likes the idea of Alberta withdrawing from the Canada Pension Plan and forming our own pension plan, that is not easy to do. That would have major impacts in the rest of the country. Now, she says there'll be a referendum on that if she pushes ahead, but still, these are ideas that she likes. Our own revenue agency, our own police force. I mentioned the, the um, Sovereignty Act, basically never-ending wars with Ottawa. So you can see, even though Smith is not campaigning on these, because again, they're not popular, 
These are issues that she has talked about in the past, has not disavowed them. So you can see two very different Albertans, one more um, willing to work with other provinces and the federal government, that's the NDP, and one who is more likely to stand up and start fighting with the federal government, especially with the Trudeau government in Ottawa, and that would be the UCP. We'll leave it for, there for today. Political commentator Graham Thompson joining us. Graham, thanks for this breakdown. You're welcome.